Hello and welcome to the only podcast where we predicted the Bad Batch so wrong we had to re-record an intro joke. I'm Matt. I'm Luke. And I'm Max. And this is Voice for Thought. Hello and welcome to Force for Thought again. Our topic of the day is looking ahead to 2024. Last week we did uh, kind of a 2023 in review. Um, and I guess off the top, is what what are you guys most excited about for 2024? The Acolyte. I was going to say Acolyte and Skeleton Crew. Spoiler, those are coming up in a little bit. But yes, I agree. It's the same exact thing. I, Man. I'm more excited for Bad Batch than Skeleton Crew. I, I still really? have... I don't know. I'm not... Because you really like Bad Batch or because Skeleton Crew? I'm feeling crew pessimistic doesn't... about Skeleton Crew. Ooh. I don't know. What? I well, know people have like seen the trailer at Star Wars Celebration. Mm-hmm. And when I listen to like other podcasts talk about it that saw it at Star Wars Celebration, it sounds so much more real to them. Yeah, but to me, it still sounds like some... The Skeleton Disney... Crew? Yeah. There was a trailer for Skeleton Crew at Celebration? Yeah. I don't know if it was a trailer, but there it's was footage. Footage leaked, yeah. Not leaked. Footage you represented. It was it like, like... I watched the leaked <laughs> footage, footage. Sorry, that's why I had in, that my in my mind, head. it still doesn't exist. But like people have yeah. seen footage. So it is coming, and you know, Lucasfilm still says it's coming this year, and I... Although have plenty of reasons not to trust them saying that, mm-hmm. we have seen footage of it, and I, I think should get on the hype train, but I'm still not. The thing about it is it's hard to get on the hype train when it's supposed to come out presumably in November 2023 was the original guesstimate slate, late 2023, so let's just say November, right. and then it gets pushed by basically a full calendar year. It's a little hard, but with that being said, I am excited, which we can talk more about. And to be honest, I just brought that up so I can grab my notes and you guys can riff for a couple seconds. <laughs> uh, so before we get into the live action shows, we can get into the animated shows is what I have kind of first up is Bad Batch Season 3. Um, again, obviously, this is just kind of added to the to the slate. Obviously, during the announcement, they uh, left out Bad Batch and we all kind of theorized. And then I feel like they kind of we everyone kind of bullied them into announcing that it's officially happening. The final mix happened in December. And so I feel like this could be potentially the first Star Wars animated show of 2024 of a new release as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably right? true. I mean, what else would it be? Oh, because there's also... I mean, what, what's it competing in terms of animation? No, Young honestly, Jedi Adventures and... Tales of the Jedi. Tales of the Jedi. But honestly, it could just be anything besides, obviously, Skeleton Crew or something, too. I feel like this is... Even though there's not a trailer or anything, I feel like realistically this is our best shot of seeing there, Star Wars in 2024. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, I think we're definitely going to see it in 2024. But No, our best shot at something. That's our first thing in 2024. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, Being no, the it's first thing. for yeah. sure going to happen. That's why it's in this episode. I, it is I, January 18th at the time of recording yes. this, and we still don't have a release date for any of this stuff. So like, that's true. Nothing's probably coming out in February. And that's Maybe what I was going to say. Because for yep. uh, Acolyte and Skeleton Crew, you have to assume that they're going to be promoting that, and they're going to give you trailers way ahead of time and everything yes. like that. Mm-hmm. For Bad Batch and Tales of the Jedi, yeah. I feel like there is a better chance that they're going to like drop a trailer and be like, oh, by the way, this comes out in a month and a half. Yeah, you know? in, I mean, May the 4th is the perfect day to be like, first episode of Bad Batch and Tales of the Jedi are going to come out too. We have a good amount of content coming out this year that they sh- really shouldn't save it all for May the 4th and after, but mm-hmm. it's, I feel like it's too late for anything to come out before. I agree. But also, I, we've, we've talked about this on this podcast a lot about Star Wars. That feels like it's a fun holiday thing as well. And I feel like around the holidays, it's like, I don't know. You're hoping they overindulge at Christmas time? Yes. And that's, yes, which I don't want to, it's hard not to jump back and forth, I think, a little bit too. But Skeleton Crew feels like the perfect holiday thing like in in for disney plus i think they do holiday content really well um for a couple two years ago now uh, the beatles get back was like the perfect thanksgiving release like th- i don't know i can't think of honestly a better thanksgiving for me was <laughs> i don't know anything about the beatles <laughs> that's the per- i've tried um but that's like the perfect i don't know example i think that i, that I have and i hope that like skeleton crew seems like you know a couple episodes right around thanksgiving when you have nothing really else to do it sounds lovely to me. It is centered around kids, so that yes. lends itself naturally to holidays. Yeah, exactly. So, so it feels something more like, it's not like when you're like, oh, this like Andor is going to drop on Thanksgiving. Like That'd be a little weird, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But like Skeleton Crew feels in line. Again, I don't really know. Also, I just remember Young Je- or, um, Tales of the Jedi released all of its episodes at once, for season one at least. Mm. So I guess they would probably, they might at least do that again for season two, and that wouldn't make it flow more naturally in terms of... Yeah. Releasing everything staggered. Uh, non-podcast related. You have your SD card, right? You never took my SD card. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So I got the sound bites on it. That makes sense. I was very good, worried good, we good, were recording good. this entire time. 
This is that would gold, have, Matthew. That, that would have sucked. And so now I'm glad this is in here too. Um, right, just cut that. Yeah, yeah the first un- uncuttable <laughs> thing. But yeah, Tales of the Dragon. Did it all drop at once? I thought it was a batch release. No, because there's only six episodes. They all dropped at once. It might have been May the 4th episodes? also. I thought it was. Wasn't yeah, it? Three Ahsoka, okay. Three Dooku. Yeah. Man, and the Dooku stuff was obviously the better of the two, right? Like, it's more interesting. Oh, I think so. Can we theorize about who the Jedi are going to be in season two? No. Because Kit Fisto is <laughs> an option. Yeah. I mean, Kit Fisto would be perfect for this, really, right? No joke. Like, it would be great. I, I'm not, there is no I'm not, way. <laughs> There's you don't think so? It's, it's possible. I think it could be, especially if they're doing Dooku. I feel like they're doing prequel era stuff. Yeah, so. Dooku and Ahsoka are these weird characters. I didn't say. Well, that's true. I guess when they we did the assumption when they is, first announced uh, Tales of the Jedi, yeah. we were theorizing about who it would be, and we never we were thinking it would be people more outlandish than Dooku and Ahsoka. Yes. I mean, Ahsoka is as obvious as it could be. Mm-hmm. Dooku was interesting, but it's still like in that prequel era and it didn't really explore that much new stuff. It was all mm-hmm. stuff that was pretty heavily implied and it wasn't really that new. I was thinking they could do like Ben Solo, they could do Rey, they yes. could do young Qui-Gon or like any of these other Jedi in mm-hmm. the Clone Wars besides Kiati Mundi, personally. <laughs> but there's so many options. I really hope they just don't go with Obi-Wan Kenobi, Kenobi or yeah. something. Or Mace Windu. I think, um, I think there's a good chance they will because I feel like Tales of the Jedi feels like like just bonus content for the Clone Wars. Like yeah. hey, we wanted to do this arc, but it was either before or after, so we couldn't fit it in. That's a good. I feel like they're not going to go so to far it. to like Ben Solo's time. But I wish they would because that's like the risk that we're talking about, and the fact that I feel like it's again we, we we love Clone Wars, we've seen it, but it's like man, it would be nice for more content. And it's almost the same thing with like look when you're saying new shows being in the Galactic Civil War era, it's almost the same thing with animated shows. It's like oh well, of course it's going to be in the Clone mm-hmm. Wars era or have to do with. Uh, I don't know a little bit those characters within that show because again specific, that's but that with that being said Dooku is a great entry point for the prequel fans and I think Ahsoka is a great entry point for uh, the Clone Wars fans and so now that you're you kind of have those entry points. I feel like weirder characters are start with one weird character. Maybe like maybe it's maybe it, it's unfortunately maybe it'll be Mace Windu and then Kid Fisto. Mace Windu is a high probability. Yeah, there's a lot of Mace Windu stuff coming out in 2024. A lot of Mace Windu. He stuff. was already in Tales of the Jedi season one though with mm-hmm. the Dooku stuff. I remember yeah. at Celebration 2020. Jeez, when was it? 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Filoni was talking about it, or he was talking about something unrelated. But he was talking about the the Clone Wars and Ahsoka and how. It's like the moral of her story and Star Wars in general that like I know that they're that these clones are technically my enemies now, but mm-hmm. they're my brothers in arms and I'm not gonna fight them, I'm not gonna kill them. And that's a story the that's a theme that echoes across all of Star Wars. Like I know he's my father, but I'm not gonna fight him. And I remember thinking in the moment, I just wanted to shout out like, talk about Ray. Because Dave <laughs> Filoni never talks about Ray or any of the sequels. And I get that like he did the Clone Wars, and that's kind of his mm. jam. And I don't know, maybe as chief creative officer, he'll be more inclined to expand beyond just the Clone Wars. But I don't think I, I definitely don't think he's like a sequel hater. But I've definitely noticed that he's never talked about it. Yeah, I don't think it's a Dave Filoni thing. I think it's a Lucasfilm thing because they keep teasing things and they don't follow up with it. I feel like they just keep trying to go wherever the wind blows, and they just knew that you know, okay, fans didn't really love the sequels, so we're just gonna. Let that stay for a little bit. Yeah, go back to the Star original Wars celebration. Trilogy, yeah. Those fans did love the sequels. Yeah, if there was ever a true. time when he could talk about Ray or Kylo Ren, it was then, and he didn't. Yeah. And I, Man, I that always put in the back of my mind. I think Tales of the Jedi is a really cool format. I wish it did span more time. I think it would be really cool if it was like nine episodes and we had three characters that we followed each with three uh episode arcs or something like that and one can be like before the clone wars one could be after the clone wars and one could be like ben solo's era or something like that maybe, we- maybe we'll even get uh i know i'm always talking about my knights of the hidden path idea but maybe we'll get one of those characters maybe we'll get quinlan voss during the oh my gosh time Tyler of the empire back in night in uh, tales of the jedi would be so perfect that's a Dave Filoni created character, mm-hmm. not created, I guess, but he did. Dave Filoni did that in the Mandalorian, and that's like the perfect opportunity to bring him in and just I, tell a story yeah. just about him. That's in true. That one but don't you want era. something a little bigger with the with the hidden path a little bit too? It's like, is that a good bridge? I don't mean, I don't mean that, that whole story. I just yeah. mean like you can tell like a story with one of those characters. Man, it's true. It, you know, it, it's can, there. it can span time, but I don't think it's going to. Like I said, I think it's going to be shortly before or after the events of Clone Wars. Yeah. I think it will be too, but I hope it's not. It's there's so many story. I mean, I guess even if you did Quinlan Voss, it could still be shortly after Clone Wars. But Quinlan Voss, 
is a really interesting character, and I'm surprised we haven't gotten anything about him since that book with him and um, Dark Disciple. Yeah, thank you, Dark Disciple with him and Asajj Ventress. Well, like you said, they do like to double down on the more popular characters that will, you know, presumably sell more books and stuff too. I guess, which is unfortunate. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they do have really weird books. So who knows? They name dropped him in Kenobi, though. They did, and that same thing be. with Obi Wan's brother. And, and neither of them were for nothing. <laughs> no one cares about Obi Wan's brother. Maybe, maybe the Living Force. Sixty-six percent of this podcast does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Maybe the Living Force book will be a nice uh, transition into starting to care about the more minor characters because they can market it as all about Yoda and Mace Windu and stuff, and mm-hmm. then just have it be all about Yarl I mean, Poof. <laughs> it, it was uh, about Dooku and Ahsoka, but we did get Yaddle. I mean, everyone was thoroughly shocked by that. So yeah, that's true. Maybe Kid Fisto makes an appearance as like one of the main characters in a Mace Windu episode or something like that. I don't know. I would love that so much. I'm talking like the Mace Windu episode is just assumed. It's not, but I think it's a if, it's a high if, probability. If I were a betting man, yeah. I would put money on. And that. that's because be, you are a betting man. <laughs> I so would who be, wants it on? I would be very satisfied if Kit Fisto was in a Mace Windu arc to the same degree that Mace Windu was in the Dooku arc. Like, mm-hmm. it was only one episode, but he was heavily involved in that one episode. Yeah. yeah. Same with Yaddle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, moving very, on, the next excited. thing uh, would be... Well, hold on. I, I wanted to go back <laughs> to Bad Batch, because we, we oh. kind of really glossed over that. Yeah, go, go for I it. I don't know. I mean, real quick, because I'm assuming once it does uh, come out or we get a release date, we'll do an episode theorizing a little bit more in-depth. Absolutely. Depth, but big picture, what are your thoughts? You think I'm they're going to die? You think they're going to live and go in retirement? No, I think they're going to... I think Echo... I think Echo will live in Omega, and you think Echo will live. I, I think, think Echo will most live. Likely to die. Really? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's not the bat. He's not. He's the. He lifts right out. I think that's. I think that's why. I think that's. Why. I think like like Wrecker and Hunter. Hunter for sure is a goner. I. Uh, you know. I think Crosshair will redeem himself with his brothers, and then be and obviously also die. And obviously Omega will. I think play into a bigger part uh, with everything. But I don't know. That's that's overall i kind of had in the back of my head mm-hmm. that maybe it would end up with like hunter and omega just being happy on a homestead but that's basically how season three of the mandalorian <laughs> exactly. ended. Like, i was like well, you can't do exactly that now yeah that's true so it's got to be something different than that i don't know i don't see hunter living and wrecker dying for some reason you know i feel like that's and it would be too sad for omega if all of them died yes and wrecker which, and but... omega have a very close relationship exactly that's true which is why it's gonna be so much harder when he dies and then i also but i feel like echo does have that like distance between them because he is like literally like half robot uh droid that that felt weird to say robot um (laughs) but like he feels more like a robot than a droid but um uh yeah i feel like he's more viable weirdly like he's like oh i'll teach you the the ways of how to live i don't know versus i feel like wrecker is like we're gonna go have fun yeah, mm, that could be and an interesting I'm thinking dynamic. like thematically how the 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 story seems to be like what do the clones do after war, and most of the clones just get executed it seems or killed one way or another. Mm-hmm. But the Bad Batch is different, and I don't see them just hanging up their armor and retiring. No, like one way or another, I think they're gonna keep fighting. And because not that this is a reason not to do it, because there are ways to work around it, but because we haven't seen the Bad Batch in the original trilogy era or the sequel trilogy era or anything or Omega ever. Like they have to take some sort of back seat, and they can't just say like, "Oh, we're gonna keep helping the galaxy," but not yeah. in a big way, just in a small way, because you know they'd get roped into it in a big way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. There was that story arc in uh, season two with Senator Chuchi when they were fighting for clone rights. That's a g- great arc as well. Mm-hmm. Also blue. Yeah. So another Thrawn character. will be looking. Is that what we talked? Did we mention her actually? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's what I thought. I was like, "Well, that's another another bluey." Yeah, I don't know. There's I. There's a couple ways that they can take it. I'm really excited for Bad Batch Season 3. And we know it's the final season, so yes. I don't know. I'm really excited for that one. And I hope they drop batched episodes as well, so it's not every week. Correct. And we have to talk about it. We'll figure it out how we're going to you know, do that. I'm not sure we'll be able to do like one full Force for Thought episode per episode. Maybe we do. Like, oh, hey, here's talking about episodes one and two of The Bad Batch. I would like to, because I'm re-watching Season 2 right now, mm-hmm. and I could talk for a half hour about every single one of those episodes. It is okay. incredible. Yeah, I love I'm, it. I really like it. And I assume it's not going to go back to the season one format where it's a little bit more filler, um, which I feel I I feel like they didn't know it was going to be three seasons because I feel like season one is a lot of like these characters are fun. Like even the tech episode in season two is a blast, even though it feels like filler, but when it's does not. not pod racing. <laughs> yes, it was, it, but it's still a blast. Even the filler episodes, I still mm-hmm. would love to talk about because no, same. like that. Mandalorian episode that everyone dislikes but me because it's a filler. Like, there's so much cool lore it's stuff to even talk about in the filler episodes that it almost makes a better 
discussion for us. The that's true, but the, the the tech episode is not just filler because it gives him more emotional weight and depth when he dies. So in the grand scheme of the season, it's not a filler, but like in season one, it's kind of just filler. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well. well what was the filler episode in season one that you're thinking? I about? don't know, like a bunch of them. I feel like they're like, oh, there's that Rancor episode that comes yes. to mind. Oh yeah, where your Perlman's like basically go do this mission, and then oh, and the young Hera episode that felt like yeah, filler. but I did like that. I do love Hera. Exactly. That's what, that's what I mean. In these, <laughs> All right, we'll be talking every episode. <laughs> just because it doesn't advance the plot of the Bad Batch doesn't mean it's not exceptional Star Wars worth talking about. That's true. That is true. Um, just like that episode of Mandalorian that no one likes but me. <laughs> it's not that it's. It's not that it's like have like Lawrence fun to look at. It's just I'd rather if we're only gonna get just say how many episodes? Thirty two episodes? No. How many episodes of Mando do we have currently? Twenty four. We have twenty four episodes of Mandalorian. Every Are you moment counting those two episodes in the book of Boba Fett. We have twenty four <laughs> we have twenty six episodes of Mandalorian. And I feel like if you only have that many for a show, every single minute has to count, right? That's a lot of episodes. No, it's not. I feel like there's so many shows that have done so many. You know, like X Files. Think about how much plot per it season. had. It only had enough plot for two seasons with some filler in those two seasons. Well, that's what then we always talk. Like, you know, give me a Moff Gideon episode. There's a full Moff Gideon episode, so that, mm, that Gideon you know, alone. That's yes. cool. Yeah. Show me, show me him escaping from. Yes, the they basically New did Republic. though. They had the no, the <laughs> Doctor Pershing and Elia Kane episode. That was a great episode. That was not a filler episode. But they didn't really do a good job of coming back to that and they did not circling up with it because no. when it came out, Matt and I were really defending that episode because we were like, "This is great." It wasn't like a one-off yes. episode. This is clearly like something is being set up and they're gonna like come back later in the mm-hmm. season and they're gonna resolve it. And then they just kind you of got didn't. that cool glowing space ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. And they got to see the, the rock I, on chorus. I really liked that. The licks were weird. <laughs> yeah. But man, who cares? It was cool to see. <laughs> exactly. I really liked that episode. It was Same. only in hindsight where I was like, yeah, they could have done a better job. Of yes. <laughs> Nothing dots. really happens. But, yeah. but well, damn it. I was going to say maybe in season four, but like, I guess the movie, maybe they'll come back into play. They have to, I assume. No, yeah, that's done because cloning's done. Dr. Pershing was the only link back to cloning, and now he's got his mind flayed. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, you did. We talked about this last week. Yeah, we talked about it on pod. We were t- me and you said that we think cloning is going to be a big part of the New Republic movie. <laughs> and Luke yeah. said the same thing. That's true. <laughs> yeah, because it has to. Because they did that whole story arc. <laughs> Wait. We, so yeah, easily they, have to. they have to. All right, I'm back. I'm back. All right, there we go. Okay, they we're back on the mind, same page. but it's going to come back somehow, somewhere. Yes. Yeah, it's going to tie into she Palpatine. She turned the dial all the way up. I don't know. Yeah, that was... <laughs> that is all we know about it. How is... How, I don't know how I haven't honestly put like a song to that. Like just the volume gets louder. He's listening to like Master <laughs> of Puppets or something. He's listening to something. Uh, or something terrible. So then he's just like freaking out. Um, anyway, the next show, The Young Jedi Adventures, which... I have not watched past the first episode. Um, I've watched a couple episodes. My my son is almost two. He mm-hmm. still doesn't really like to watch TV. Maybe by the time season two is coming out, he'll be more into it. Yeah, but it's no strong. I will definitely watch the other. that show with my future son, and and it have, feels like a purpose to watch it. But like, it is obviously very geared towards young kids and stuff. And uh, there's, it feels like you can do other things with your day i feel like or at least for me it's like i'm like ah, i should be doing something else i'm watching like a like ultra young star wars kids show um but the season one is still going on so when i said earlier that season you know uh, bad batch is presumably the first thing we're going to get in star wars this year of 2024 it's technically wrong because we're still getting uh young jedi, jedi adventures which goes till late february I and did then, not realize that. I yeah. know they were still coming out with new episodes. Yeah, it's like 24 episodes per season. So um, is there like a season wow. two that's supposed to come out in later this year? Or? Yeah, that's what they announced was season two. Cool. Um, so season two is coming out later. And I assume it is weird. It's like, is the animation cheaper? Like, Why is that being made faster than anything else? Like animation wise, like Bad Batch or uh, yeah, that's Tales of the Jedi. I have no idea. Right? I, that's probably, I have no idea. It, it, could, it could be made cheaper. It's like a distinct style. It that is. all kids shows do, but yep. I assume that's for like kids purposes, the way their brains interpret information. It's yep. actually just because that's the sh- style that AI can turn out. So they're just like, all right, <laughs> that's it, kids. <laughs> there it is. Um, mo- I assume we have nothing else to talk about in that show, no events to that show, but now moving on to, li- to live action, which I feel like is the 
uh, debatably more exciting stuff, but also we talked about a lot of cool stuff, so I'm not sure. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is the actual movies themselves. As we know, the Ray movie and the Mandalorian and Grogu movie are both moving into production this year, which means obviously they're beginning to shoot, and obviously we still have a very lengthy process until they edit and is able or able to come out. I assume we'll see these movies late 2025. Christmas 2025 feels like a perfect date for these one of these movies to come out um, because Star Wars likes christmas time as i do maybe that's why maybe i'm i'm just kind of pulling this together maybe i'm just like um pushed into that theory because like rise of skywalker was released on december 22nd right mm-hmm. um and i feel like a couple other movies were released around all that time. the so, sequels and rogue one were except for solo so you see what i mean so maybe i'm just uh predisposed to to that theory and maybe that's why but either way i feel like that's a great time realistically though right again nothing to do you're watching a little bit of skeleton crew you're seeing a new movie <laughs> oh 2025 is looking good <laughs> um but anyway those movies i feel like are going to be like late 2025 early 2026 i feel like for those movies yeah, um, but for yeah. one of them, how for far one. apart do you think they're going to be? I, if they're both going into production twenty twenty four, I can see them coming out pretty soon. Maybe I don't know, like not like four months or six months, but I could see yeah. within a year. I could see. I assume Mando is going to come out first, and then the Ray movie, like we talked about last I think, week. I think it would or be two weeks ago at the very least one year apart from each other. Yeah, I don't I think would they would want to go less than that after Solo. Solo Ooh, was if a you're big betting, man, I'm gonna and... especially with the other movies. Oh, that's a good man. I don't know. Alleged, I'll go under alleged other movies. Yes, <laughs> we'll see. I'll I'll go under. I'll go like ten months. I think. I think. Really? Yeah. I I'll, think I'll, I'll go over that. I, think I would be definitely take the over on that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like they both are production at the same time. I just don't see them being like we have it. You know a lot we'll more wait. about like it's the not movie gonna... industry production and stuff. Than yeah, I, I do. do. Tell Max that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that, that doesn't really mean anything to me. They're going into no. production. What does that What does that mean? I mean, the Ray movie's not even cast yet. The Mando movie's been mm-hmm. that in we production know as Mando season four, I thought. So, what's the difference? It's, well, that's the thing. Is none of us really know anything about these movies, realistically, right? They could just randomly come out and say, oh, by the way, it's been casted, and here we're, here we're, we're shooting next month. <laughs> like, just, You know, they can withhold yeah. information like crazy. Um, or the more likely situation, which is they're going to say, oh, you know what? Actually, because of Mandalorian and Grogu, we're just going to kick back the Ray movie a year. Like, <laughs> that, right. that, that is a high possibility. Or they get... 90% through production, and they're like, actually, this movie sucks, so we're canceling it. Unfortunately, I don't think that would ever happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that would happen either. That's and happened a couple times recently with different studios. What were those? The, the Batwoman. Yeah, yeah. Batman, Batwoman. That's true, but I don't think Lucasfilm would do that. Um, the DC was just struggling, I think, in a, in a large... And a larger picture thing. The James Gunn thing was clearly happening for months before. So I think realistically, they're like, how does this fit in with the stories that we want to tell going forward? Do we want to release a movie that is going to disappoint fans and the fact that nothing's ever going to come of it? Like, I think there was more to those specifically. I don't think it was even the, you know, the director seemed very passionate about like the Batwoman movie. So I'm like, I don't know if, and they've been burned with Batwoman, the show, because the lead actress who played Batwoman like left after season one, I think, or two. So they were just like, oh, and this other lady is Batwoman as well. <laughs> and it's like, I think they've been burned a lot. So I don't know. I, I'm glad they're resetting. That's a whole other topic, though. But Yeah, I'm sorry. I brought it up. But no, no, saying, I can talk it, Batman it could, all day. Maybe. It could happen in Star Wars. I wouldn't be that surprised, mm. especially with how often they cancel projects. Yeah. I know it wouldn't be that far into production I'd that be they've su- canceled before. but I'd be surprised, but I would be really happy if they did do that. If if For any of these projects, if they just came out and they just said, yeah, it just wasn't living up to the quality that you guys deserve, so we're canning it. I'd be like, wow, okay, thank you. They kind of did that I with... Uh, I think that's great. You should do that. Kenobi, a little bit, when they were just like, oh, it's going to be a movie. Just kidding, it's going to be a show. Oh, just kidding, the scripts were rewritten into a whole new show. Yeah, that happened with Kenobi, and that mm-hmm. was delayed years because of that yeah. even after it went into production yeah. that's why i'm so jaded about this in production news being <laughs> yeah. indicative that the movie's going to come out sooner than later that doesn't mean it i think will. it's kind well, of this s- proves my point though because they still came out with kenobi that's true but they also rewrote it like and twice it didn't live they, up to your standards <laughs> they, they also did the same thing with uh, uh book of boba fett i mean surely book of boba fett was one that someone should have seen and was yeah. like uh, All right, guys, let's uh, let's not do this one. <laughs> let's let's back let's back it up. Yeah. But like, Tim is just so passionate. How do, he's playing guitar left and right with for us. <laughs> we can't not just we can't disappoint this man. Look at how good this Cad Bane mask is. <laughs> Honestly, that, that might be that a reason. Good. 
They're like, wow, oh, man, if there's only a way we can... The production sh- sh- the production design supervisor has a 10 out of 10 charisma. <laughs> He's yeah. like, but look at this character and that character in this costume. Yeah, I, I've you made gotta go an with entire it. practical rancor head. You are not canceling this show now. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny Trejo gave us free donuts for a year. He has a donut shop is why I say that. Huh. I did not know As that. I was I saying like that Boba joke. Fett. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you go listen to our episodes and relitigate it. Um, and then also, not in kind of in 2024, it's starting production in a couple of days is Andor season two is, is going back to shooting. Um, I don't know if anybody saw that, but I'm also really surprised it took this long since the writer's strike and actor's strike ended that they're going back to production now. So think, I, mean, I know it's not going to come out in 2024. I know there's no hope for that, but I really hope they did post production while they were in the middle of all that stuff too. You know, as we talked about, it's like, Tony Gilroy in season one, we talked a lot about how it took a lot of effort in the post-production process. And so I'm hoping they kind of got a head start on that because you could really get a bunch done within that time. Yeah, but wasn't Tony Gilroy kind of like shamed, though, during the strike because he was like, well, you know, I'm not writing anymore and we're not mm-hmm. shooting, but I'm still going to do like other work. And then he was they said like, well, you still got to like be in support of us. So you should stop. And they kind of like compelled him and he was like, all right, fine. Y- yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, so but I doubt they did other post-production work if Tony Gilroy is not that's a good in it. Ah, man, that's a good point. Otherwise, I feel like that's like super scabby of him. Yeah. If he's just like, all right, fine, I won't work on this show anymore. And then he's like texting his friends, like, hey, send me that clip that you just edited. I feel like, well, it's, ah, man, that's true. In solidarity, I guess that makes a lot of sense. They probably didn't do post production work. Man, that sucks. Um, so for the next show coming up, that we hate, that's actually not coming up, maybe the, the soonest, but The Acolyte is what we're going to talk about next, which is what I'm very excited yes. for. I wrote down this what it's about which is it's a mystery thriller that will take the man i hate my handwriting the mystery thriller that will take the viewers into a galaxy of shadowy man i shouldn't have fucking wrote this down (laughs) so fast it's a show it's going to take place before the phantom menace and i think it's like at the tail end of the high republic because yes, there's, there's High Republic characters. It's the last days announced. of the High Republic, and it's about yeah. a Jedi Master, or a Padawan who re- reunites with her Jedi Master and basically try to go solve a little bit of murder. Uh, and it, I think the results are even worse than they thought, which I like everything that I just said besides all the stumbling I did. But before, <laughs> but, but the core of the idea sounds fantastic, and the trailer that I saw that's leaked looks fantastic as well. And I, I only watched, I think we talked about this a while ago, only half of it because I was like, oh, I want to see this in glorious HD, <laughs> uh, which is 1080, uh, as we talked about earlier too. <laughs> but I wanted to see it, it you know, actually like, listen to it with like with, with my noise-canceling headphones and actually like watch that trailer and be excited about it. Just like I watch, you know, other trailers. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a great start to the day. And so I, I only watched half of it. But from what I saw, I was like, yeah, this looks different. It looks unique. Um, I'm very excited. I can't imagine the soundtrack. I are already thinking about that. Uh, because it's Who's like doing the soundtrack is it Kevin Kiner again? I don't know, but stylistically it looks so different, which means I feel like it has to sound so different. Yeah. And I'm just so excited for that aspect alone, to be honest. I didn't think about that. I am very excited right? for that because it's a new era too. It's completely unexplored. Is yep. it going to be? Yeah. Ooh. I know. They There's a lot of possibilities there. Get some woodwinds in there. Like, what's it going to sound like? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm earthy. excited because it's Jedi centric. That's my favorite part of Star Wars is the Jedi, and sure. by and large, like I know we have the Clone Wars era, but in like the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy, whenever there's a Jedi, it's like they're the other one yes, in that's the true. crowd. And I'm excited for the Jedi to be the main character, surrounded by other Jedi. Yeah, and we've not at war. <laughs> we've never gotten that either, like ever. Like you said, it's always teased, it's always hinted at, and I think it's like, even in the the sequel trilogy, it's like, oh, the lightsabers are used more, they're you're, they're seen more, they're used in different ways, you know, Finn using it, a non-force user, in the canon that we know, and then, um, and then, um, and then don't, don't, why are you side-eyeing now? Luke can't side-eye anymore, so at, I gotta side At the side time eye. that it was released, he was not a force user. Yes. I, I would not have side-eyed that, for the record. Um, but either way, we, we have just different... Uh, lightsaber usage in the sequel trilogy but even then it's not even close to what we're going to get i don't think in the acolyte and that's not even saying they're going to have a bunch of lightsaber battles all the time i think it's just the idea of the jedi and their ways and how they're acting again you said not in war and it's a separate mission it's not like oh the full galaxy is at stake it's like oh no right. actually it might be that might be what they <laughs> uncover realistically is that the galaxy might be at stake um i, mean, I don't want to sound ungrateful for the prequel era because i know a lot of what we're saying is in the prequel era but it's like the prequel era the whole theme and story of it is like the Jedi suck now and this is why they fall. Yeah. And I'm excited to see an era before that when they're in, you know, height of their idealism and 
their whatever helping the galaxy and not being political pawns by yeah. Palpatine. Yep, I'm excited just because it's new. Yes, it, it, and it has nothing to do with any other characters that we already know. Um, maybe except for a couple of High Republic characters that I just said are going to be in it as well. Or but old. Watch Yoda. Mace Windu show up. Oh, that's true. Yoda could be in it as well. Um, but it, it's not like a legacy character that they're you know taking care of to protect or anything like yeah. that. You know, there's not going to be anything behind the scenes of being like you know oh should we should we include this scene should we not and producers being like ah, I don't know this is this is Obi Wan Kenobi we're talking about I don't know if that's going too far mm-hmm. or uh, uh, Boba Fett again you know. I feel like because this is new, we don't know these characters, we don't know anything, they can really just swing for the fences. And that excites me because mm-hmm. if this show were to be absolutely terrible, if I watch it and I'm like, yeah, that's not for me, it really makes no impact because yeah. it doesn't ruin anything, right? Like Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi, you can say like, oh, like those shows, if they uh, if they were really that terrible, that they start to take away from those characters for you. Mm-hmm. I said already on this episode, I dislike the book of Boba Fett, but I still like Boba Fett as a character. Kenobi, the show had its flaws, but I ended up really liking the show. So I, it, it works for me. But with this show, like I said, swing for the fences. And if you miss, then it really doesn't matter. You know, I mean, I, I hate to say that there's low expectations because yeah. my expectations aren't really low, but there's nothing that I'm comparing it to. Yep. Agreed. That always makes me mad when people say that. And I think I've talked about that on the podcast before, that my view is that there is nothing that could come out that could retroactively ruin a character's legacy like that. Like the book of Boba Fett, even if you hated it, doesn't change how cool Boba Fett was in Empire Strikes Back. That's true. And if they come out with something next year that's just Boba Fett getting food poisoning and then sitting on a toilet with diarrhea for 45 minutes. That's that kind of what we like... watched with Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it, if it's the worst possible thing, it will not make me like Boba Fett less. It will make me not like that movie or show or whatever it is, but the character still has his stories from before that are not tarnished by something that came after. No, no I, I agree. I, I disagree. I think you absolutely can tarnish them retroactively. I uh, I don't think Book of Boba Fett was so bad that it, yeah. it absolutely ruined the character or anything like that. But like, take, you can uh, do that. But I don't think it's been done in Star Wars. That's what right? I'm saying. You cannot do that. I know. Well, I I don't I don't, I don't think it's between. ever been done in Star Wars. There's yes, never I been agree. a character where I have, after seeing more content, have been like, okay, they ruined that character for me. Same. I was gonna make up a hypothetical. Like oh, okay, if in Star Wars Episode yeah. Seven, uh, it was revealed that Han Solo was like force sensitive the whole time. You know, then it's like. Yeah. Ah, uh, there's a lot that doesn't make sense there. I don't like so this anymore. So you're kind of taking an like, example where they like kind of shoot Horn the same thing with Leia though. <laughs> At the very end. With Return of the Jedi, you mean? Yeah, a little bit. Well, that, that's pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty similar example, Maxwell. That's interesting. But no, I grew up with that, so I guess no, it doesn't but, matter to me. So I guess it's subjective. Still no, but no, you're right. On, it, no, you're right though. Sorry to ruin that because Leia, it was hinted at in, in in Return, and then they obviously expanded it versus Han Solo zero. Um, so sorry, I was just joking, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was very similar. I don't know. I, all I'm saying is it's possible. Yes. I don't think they will, but yeah, ma- massive decisions like that. But I don't think they they would do that because they are so concerned. With that being said, I do wonder how Boba Fett got through. Kind of like not that it's about even a it's bad not show. Bad. It's not bad, but like if you were to do a Boba Fett show, would is that how you would have done it? No, right? I have no idea how to answer yeah, that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> It doesn't matter, though, because the Acolyte is something brand new. And so exactly. somebody is saying, this is the Acolyte. Is this how we want to do it? And people are going, yes, because why not? Let's yep. call our shot now on how brand new is this going to be. Do you think Yoda is going to be in season one of the Acolyte? No, I don't think so. I'm going to say no. I think yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're I think they're going to try to step away a little bit. I don't think they're... I don't know nothing about this show, I guess, technically, so I don't know why I'm really going to die <laughs> on this horse. But I do feel like, like Max said, it's new. It's the same thing. This is so dumb. Frasier, one of my favorite shows of all time. Cheers, one of my favorite shows of all time. Frasier comes from the show Cheers and then goes off on his own at the end of Cheers to Seattle. And in the reboot, he moves back to Boston to be with his son uh, who and his wife Lilith stayed in Boston the entire time. So why not show those Cheers characters? They're there. He's in the same city, right? And it's the same thing. It's like, let it stand on its own for the first season. And then if you really want to introduce, you know, Sam or Norm or anybody, it's like, or Carla, it's like, then maybe in season two, they can make a couple cameos. But like, let the show stand by itself, uh, I think. That's I, a really roundabout way. I, su- I support that theory and that reasoning. <laughs> the idea of that. I'm yeah. even taking away whether or not I would like Yoda to be in it. Just like Lucasfilm and the fact that Fraz- Frank Oz is alive and Yoda is a puppet and they could include him at any point in any era at any time. 
doesn't it just seem too easy to include him and get all that publicity? That'll be, that'll be the thumbnail for every single YouTube video that, that when that episode releases, including ours. Yeah. I mean, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely see that. That said, I'm, it's not like make or break for me. Like if Yoda's not in it, I'm not going to be like justice for Yoda. And if Yoda is in it, I'm not going to be upset that it's bringing in a legacy character. I, I, yeah. Either way, it's it is what it is. I don't think Yoda's going to be a main character just no. because of the way they've mm -mm. kind of been presenting it so far. So mm -hmm. if he appears, then yeah, I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, because he's there. Also, we know from the higher public that Yoda was the grandmaster. In the higher public, there were three grandmasters. And at some point, it changes down to one in the prequel era. And Yoda was one of the three Grandmasters, and then at some point becomes the one and only Grandmaster. So it's not like you could hand wave it away and be like, oh, Yoda wasn't around and wasn't this prominent yeah. of a Jedi at this time. We know he was. That's interesting. I didn't know that because I haven't, I haven't read The High Republic. So mm -hmm. this is phase one or three. What are you asking? When Yoda's a Grandmaster. Uh, one and three, yeah. Oh, he's a Grandmaster by one? Mm -hmm. It starts with him being a Grandmaster. I was surprised, too, because I thought they were going to go... So do the other Grandmasters... Are th there's are they in two, then, presumably? The second? When it goes... Well, the two's the prequel. Yeah, right? so is that why there's... Is that when there's three? No, there's three in phases one and three. The, no. The crux of the High Republic. So maybe at the end of phase three, it'll be revealed why there's only one now, which I don't want to spoil the Eye of Darkness, but I did finish it, and... I can tell why one of them isn't a Grandmaster anymore. Whoa. A plug for Eye of Darkness. <laughs> it's fish. good. I really liked it. I don't think I'm going to go rogue on it. I'm not going to diverge into my whole review of Eye of Darkness right now, but because I don't have enough to say to go for a full rogue one, but it was really good. I liked it. They found some shady stuff on his computer. They were like, this guy's out? No, he was executed. Oh, okay. Oh, because of the computer me. stuff? That's <laughs> 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 so stupid. Um... Anyway, moving on from the Acolyte, which is going to be the first live action show we're going to see in 2024, um, to the Skeleton Crew. It's about four kids who find themselves lost in the galaxy and try to find their way back home. And if there's anything that I would love more than Star Wars is just uh, kids on bike stories, right? You're looking at E.T., you're looking at Goonies, you're looking at Stranger Things. You know, kids on bike stories are some of my favorite movies, some of my favorite IP. Um, Stand By I mean, Me. I do like Stand By Me, but it gets so it's so dark. <laughs> um but, like, those movies I genuinely love about, like, childhood and stuff. And so if that is the – if they're trying to catch a little bit of that wave of, like, Stranger things -y when they're – it's like, hey, we have to do this, like, kids in space thing, I really do want to see that. I'm not ex describing it well, but if you can combine that thrill and adventure um, in Star Wars, I'm really – all for that. The one thing that I'm a little held up on for some reason is that I really like Jude Law as an actor. He's obviously the staple kind of, of that show as, as the main actor. But like, I think he was just in Hook not that long ago. And I'm only picturing him as Hook for some reason in the show. <laughs> and no, that's not true. I know that's not true in my head. But I like, only picture him as Watson from Sherlock and Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock and Holmes? <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's his first name, last name kind of thing. I think Sherlock, it's Sherlock Holmes. Holmes. <laughs> Sherlock and Holmes. Sherlock, Sherlock and Holmes and Watson. There was the three of he them. He is Watson. <laughs> the yes. famous trio. Yes, the tr Sherlock and Holmes and Watson. Yes, everyone's favorite. Well, who who's who in that? Are you Sherlock Watson or Holmes? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I think I'm Holmes. Obviously, I call Sherlock. I think I think I'm Watson. That's perfect. Oh, that's Excellent. worked out so well. <laughs> wow. That's Can why this podcast operates so smoothly. <laughs> We're gonna... just on the same wavelength in every single topic. <laughs> Our audience right now is going like, "Hold on, they do know that that is two people, though, right? <laughs> we do know." <laughs> Uh, um. Anyway, it's got, <laughs> yeah, but yes, yeah, uh, a long way to say we don't have that much to say about skeleton, <laughs> which is so funny because this is the one I was most excited to talk about mainly because the kids on bike theory. But like other than that, I got nothing really. Yeah, it's like the how I feel with the acolyte that I'm really excited for Jedi in their prime, yeah. and you're excited for kids on bikes. It's just we don't know anything about these shows other than a tagline, basically. Yeah. And that's just what we like in movies and TV. So I'm happy for you. I don't really have strong feelings for skeleton crew because. Similar, or no, what I was saying earlier, I'm not that convinced that it exists. I haven't yep. seen it with my own two eyes, and until I do, Lucasfilm hasn't really earned my trust to just say it's coming out, and I promise, but yeah. I don't um, know. It'll probably come out, and I'm sure I'll love it, but They're, they're looking behind know, the curtain, but they're not showing you. They're like, oh, it's good. <laughs> it's it good. It also is a new story, new, new characters, for the most part, that we know. Um, and takes place in the New Republic era, same thing as the Mandoverse. And so I assume some of it could potentially tie into the New Republic movie. We'll see. Um, which, honestly, now that I'm saying it out loud, it makes more sense that it got pushed from November 2023 to 
just say November 2024 because it would be closer to the Mando movie. So if you're if it does tie in any sort of way, even character wise or themes or whatever, it would make more sense because it's more top of mind. Um, yeah, if that's possible, I I wouldn't be surprised if it tied in because they could have. Although I don't know, they chose to make it in the New Republic in the Mandoverse era. That's not like a random decision. They could have put it if it's really just kids trying to get home. They could have put it in any era. They could have put it after the Rise of Skywalker. But yep. they chose to put it in the Mandoverse, and I imagine it's for crossover potential. It's because all the True. kids are going to end up being uh, Grogu and Yoda species. And they find Grogu they're like, "Hey, we're trying to get home. You want to come with us?" <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, I doubt it. <laughs> same. Uh, moving on to games now. There's two games in 2024, supposedly, and it's Star Wars Outlaws, which... I'm excited. Yeah, That same. game looks great. It looks amazing. But will it come out, do you think? Yeah. I yeah? Mm-hmm. Finally, you think? This is interesting, because I said I'm not, I wouldn't believe it until I see like a trailer for like a movie or a TV show, but <laughs> video games are different, because different. video games, we've seen tons of trailers for that never came out. True. So Yeah, but this trailer Even was, though I saw the trailer, I'm still like... It wasn't a gameplay trailer, but it was more akin to a gameplay trailer than like what we saw for... The Knights, Knights of the Old Republic remake mm-hmm. was just a, what's his name? Darth Revan, Mask, Pan, and the Star Wars Acolyte, wa- or not Acolyte, what was, what's the Eclipse. other? Eclipse. Eclipse, thank you. You just said that. Um, that was like a whole intro that was completely independent from the game. You didn't see any mm-hmm. gameplay or something similar to it. But this, you like get characters and the locations and the ideas on what's going to be happening and stuff. Yep. And I think I think this is definitely coming out, and I'm excited for it. It's an open-world game, and K. Vess is the main character. It takes place in the criminal underworld, and basically you're just kind of deciding who you're working with and against in the in that criminal underworld. Uh, after Crimson Dawn and stuff, and you have the huts in it, so I feel like there's a lot uh, that will be tied into the rest of Star Wars and be able to kind of When does have... it take place? Did Ooh, it say? Between uh, Empire... Or yeah. short, just after Empire, Han Solo's frozen in carbonite. Yes, oh, yes, really? he is. Yeah. He's in the trailer. It's, yeah, I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, oh man, how did I forget that? It is, it is super rad. And that is just the perfect sandbox for a video game to play in, right? There, like is, that so, era. there is so many lore crossovers that they can introduce. All of the comics in that era mm-hmm. that we just got. Like, I've been playing. Especially because uh, War of the Bounty Hunters was a big event that had to do yes. with Han Solo being in carbonite. Yeah, we could have a lot. Of, we could. I mean, Crimson, Crimson Dawn and Kira could yeah. be in it. Exactly. I'm so excited for the potential. And like, w- that'd be an amazing way to inter- reintroduce Kira to Star Wars universe a little bit. It's like, oh, she's in this game, and this is what she's doing. Get people talking. Get it going. Yeah. I I feel like I've said this before, too. The comics did a good job of reintroducing her to mm-hmm. the universe, and I don't want to sell that short. But I, I would love if Kira was in this. It would bring back Amelia Clark, who I'd love to see play Kira mm-hmm. again. Um, but like all of the comics... You know, uh, Valance from the Bounty Hunters comic, the mm-hmm. all the other Bounty Hunters um, in the era, Bosk, Dengar, IG-88, not to mention the yep. Criminal Syndicates, Darth yeah. Maul. Mm, not Darth Maul. <laughs> well, we but, don't see Darth Maul in the comics, but he... Oh, no, he wouldn't no, he's be around. Dead. No, he's dead. Yeah. Never mind. Damn. Not Darth Maul, but so many other people. <laughs> yes. Um, the other Are thing you guys going to play it? Am I going to be the only one that plays it? It'll have, probably be next-gen next gen console like fucking ps5 has been out for like a year now two years now yeah, um but true. i still don't have my only have my xbox one because i don't really play games that much like once in a yeah. while i'll get on a kick but like ultimately i don't know i i almost bought be... a ps5 to play spider-man 2 but i didn't but i have a gaming pc that should be able to handle it so yeah. that's what i'll play it on i think i well my max let's buy a system together and then we can just play that in grand theft auto well, we'll together go paternity leave I'll, I'll go in on yeah. it with yes. you guys if you want to get a ps5 and play spider-man also <laughs> all right cool let's do it i'm sure we'll have a lot of free time coming up yeah probably um, the other game coming out is dark forces which is a re-release um i believe this was on nintendo 64 um very long ago but this comes out in february apparently um i haven't really heard much about it but I think it's just a re-release i'm sure it's also just like a quick yeah download. they've re-released a good amount of those older sure. star wars games recently I, I, I didn't play this one growing up. I'm sure I won't play it now. Yeah. No strong feelings. And then so that's the games. Um, yeah, will apparently come out uh, this year. And then moving on to books. This is kind of our last little topic. Uh, I have, you know, a bunch of High Republic books seem to be coming out, as well as The Living Force by John Jackson Miller. And we're going to read that one. Yeah. I am very excited for it. Two out of the three of us have a poster of The Living Force signed by John Jackson Miller. Mm-hmm. Next to the <laughs> trash can. Because he doesn't have space for it, not because he doesn't love it. I didn't say that. <laughs> You, impl- you implied <laughs> I did not. Im- I implied no such thing. Um, 
But no, I am excited to to, to read the Living Force. That is, we've been talking a lot about it, um, but it is about all twelve Jedi Council members, um, and they kind of pair up. And it seems like a road trip movie. I guess is the way best way John Jackson Miller described it. Uh, so yes, I am very excited for that book. Um, and yeah, the same, I will sorry. say we haven't said this before yet, but I remember John Jackson Miller told us that it was the longest book he's ever written, which yeah. I'm not. I looking think he said it was to. over four hundred pages. I typically prefer them shorter. <laughs> I don't mind long books. I just like short chapters. Yeah. yeah. That's readable fair. sections. Readable, digestible yes. sections. Readable sections. Give me something that's digestible. Give me something that I can read if I have like an hour on like lunch for work or something. I'm like, you know what? I really want to read this book. I'm, or like in the morning. I love reading in the morning when I first wake up. I like swear. If Kiadi Mundi mm-hmm. teams up with Mace Windu, I'm skipping those chapters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's... That's a, I, that's a possibility, yeah. Luke. <laughs> those are by far my two least favorites. Yep. Man, um, I mean, I'm, honestly, I'm excited to see who Stacey Tin pairs up with and goes on an adventure with because yeah, I feel like he's always underrated. He's cool. I like yeah. him. He is cool. I, Didn't survive against Chief Palpatine as long as Kit Fisto, but he's that's cool. true. Not as long. No. <laughs> the real quick, the best case scenario for you is that if Mace Windu and Keanu Moody do team up, because then that way you're gonna have to do two characters you don't like for more chapters. That's true. So, although maybe if like Yadi Mundi teams up with Yaddle or something, Yaddle will just be roasting him the whole time. Maybe I don't think that's I Yaddle. Like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that, that doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. That's funny. Yeah, it would be Evan Peel. He seems like the meanest. Yeah, I am. I am very excited for it though. It's um, I I think it's supposed to be like a, a celebration piece for the yeah. Phantom Menace because 2024 is the 25 year anniversary of the Phantom Menace. And we're also getting a lot of other stuff for that time frame. We're getting some uh, a Mace Windu book uh, that we talked about on an earlier podcast, a Mace Windu comic. I think we'll be getting a lot more stuff from that Phantom Menace era yeah. for part of the, the 25th year. I really hope, and this is something I've been looking up to buy myself, honestly, for quite a while. And I should have pulled the trigger on a couple of times. But something I really hope they do, which I don't know if they will, is a Black Series pod racing helmet. I love the pod racing helmet. Mm. Um and yeah, they, that'd they, be really cool. I'm surprised they haven't yet. Yeah, they're out there. They're only just now releasing Young Anakin as a six inch, six inch Black Series figure. Oh, and interesting. They have, what 180 of them now? Yeah. I'm surprised that he was so far down on the list. Yeah. I and the, the Palace Padme also. When I got you your Kit Fist mask, which you should have brought today, by the way. Um, when oh. you when you <laughs> when I got you your Kit Fist mask, originally I was looking for myself for the. Um, the, the power racing helmet. And they're out there. They're not bad. They're like 65 to 80 bucks. Um, no box or anything, obviously. But like that is something I desperately would, would want. Um, yeah, that'd know. be cool. Anyway. Yeah, that's what's coming out in 2024 for Star Wars. Is there anything else book-wise or anything that I'm skipping over? I don't want to glance over that. Uh, the rest of the Higher Public Phase 3 Wave 1 is coming out. Um, the adult book started in 2023. The Eye of Darkness. I mentioned it. It was really good. Um, but the rest of Wave 1 and Wave 2 will be coming out in 2024, so I'll be reading those. Looking yep. forward to it. A lot of comics for them, too. Uh, the Broken Blade. Max, you read the Blade comic book mm-hmm. um, with Porter Engel from Phase 2. Yeah. And at the end, he like meditates and then opens his eyes in a really dramatic panel, and it says, Porter Engel will return in The Broken Blade. We haven't heard anything. I forgot totally about that. What the hell? What, Interesting. I mean, when, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> It's been it's been over a year. Well, the upside is that we all know Star Wars keeps the word their word, and <laughs> the higher public has been. So that was that was from Phase uh, Two, though, right? So which was the prequel era. So if the Broken Blade is going to take place in the third phase, then it's going to be like a big time jump. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Which also Porter Angle was also in the Eye of Darkness. So spoiler, but he does not get through it very well. Oh. He has a. Soft implied death, which in Star Wars is an implied survival, if you ask me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> implied survival. He's going to come back a broken man, and that's the broken blade, baby. Yeah. Oh, but there it is. Announce, announce the comic. Get, yeah. get on with it. Yeah. I want it. Get going. Interesting. Anyway. So that's a hopeful for 2024. Yeah. All right. Any, any other hopefuls? My hope, my hope would be we'll get an Andor trailer, at least, the minimum. You think we might? A full year before it comes out? I hope. That's my hope. No, because Star Wars Celebration 2025, they're going to save it. If it, if the, mm. Even if it's ready in November, they're going to save it for Do you think so? April. Call. Yeah. They're going to want something to... Yeah. Wait, when's Celebration again? April 2025. Oh, you mean if the show comes out in November? No, if the trailer 
is ready in November 2024. Okay. They'll yeah. save it for six months until April of 2025 to show it at Celebration. All right. I feel like Andor's a summer show, though. I don't know. Even if it is. Maybe they'll do a trailer, too, at Celebration. I mean, they... What happened? What released in 2022? That was when we got the Kenobi. No, they showed an episode of Kenobi. Did we get a big show trailer in 2022 for something that came out in later of 2022? What would it have been? I don't even remember. Never mind. Know. Cut that. I don't know. I can't think of it either. Um. All right. Well, that was our look ahead of 20 to 2024. Um. Does anybody have any force for thought? I forgot that's a segment we're doing right now. I do have a force for thought. What you yes. have? A, you had a force for thought. He told me to save it. He said his Whoa. is good. Yeah, I was thinking about it in the car on my way home from work, and it was just messing with me because I was thinking about Tales of the Jedi season one, uh, the Dooku arc. Oh, it must have been killing you this whole time. It we was. I really wanted it. to talk about <laughs> it because it was Yaddle too, um, uh, because Dooku uh, definitely murders Yaddle. Yet in Attack of the Clones, Kiadi Mundi says that Count Dooku is a political idealist, not a murderer, and. <laughs> That like just, your impersonation. Your <laughs> you. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. And well, he, it's because he got away with it. Yeah, but that means that the Jedi Order just has no idea what happened to Yaddle. Correct. I mean, she was there attending meetings one day. The next day, she didn't show up for work and was never seen or heard from again. Yeah, yeah. I imagine they had an investigation that turned up nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't that crazy? Like, can you she imagine? Was a council sitting member. <laughs> yeah, one of 12, a very important person. Can you imagine the conspiracy theories that would have spawned across the universe after that? Yeah. Like, imagine nuts. if there was a sitting United States senator who just didn't show up for work one day and everyone was just like, yeah, we don't, we don't know what happened. Never heard or seen from again. Auto erotic asphyxiation is what I'm saying for Yaddle. <laughs> <laughs> People are probably thinking that hey, in the galaxy. You know, like, work hard, play hard. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it was it's interesting. On the one hand, like I'm sure the Jedi did a formal investigation and stuff and tried to figure it out. But on the other hand, I could see Yanni Mundi just sitting there like, damn, that's crazy. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he just sees an opportunity. He's just like... <laughs> Is she technically in a higher position than I am? Because I see... Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi's like, so that seat's open? <laughs> <laughs> who, who did That's get that crazy. Obi-Wan That's... wasn't a council member in episode two. No, Must not two. Coleman he Trevor. was in three. Was he, was he a council member? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, I don't remember him being on the council. Oh, yeah, he was. I'm trying to think who else was, because Yarrow Poof was also not in episode two. And neither so neither was that, that serpent seat. guy with the big beard, right? Abo Rancisis. I don't think so. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. I don't. I don't know my episode two council members yeah, as well as my episode one. Go back one. and look at it. But Kit Fisto was not either. He was new in episode three on the council. A lot of turnover. I well, love that force two, for that. There is a lot of turnover. Yeah, you're, yeah, one more. Yeah, <laughs> man, bottom of the barrel. They're like, I don't know, Kit Fisto. <laughs> no, no, he deserved it. He earned it. He put in the work. Just, well, man, Anakin uh, was bottom of the barrel. Luke, do you think that it was a political pull? Tales of the Young Jedi. Nope, not Tales of the Young Jedi. Tales of the Jedi. Those kind. If we do get a Kit Fisto arc, do you think if they go more in depth with him and it's terrible, that will retroactively no. hurt him? No. Was Kit Fisto on the council in two? No, three. He wasn't in two. Okay. Mm-mm. Hmm. Sorry, I'm still distracted by that. I'm, I can like I know I'm picture actually, it in my mind's eye, but I, I can't I can't place who's there or not. I'm just really thinking about how this Yaddle was just like, yep, all right, never mind, bigger fish to fry, like you said, like Yaddle Mooney's like, I don't know, all right, anyway, <laughs> yeah, like how long until they open the investigation, and how long did that investigation go on for? Did they find anything? Like they made a public statement, they're like, yep, we did an investigation, found literally nothing, and everyone across the galaxy was just like, all right, sounds legit. I bet there was a lot of distrust sowed in the Jedi Order that day. Yeah. That one would say maybe the downfall. Oh, maybe the Jedi covered it up because they didn't want to go through all that. Oh, oh I could see God. that. Oh, but I was joking li- about the conspiracy theories that came out of it. And now I'm like, oh, I'm sold. That's <laughs> yeah, what happened. That would be committed it's to us. the living world. We're conspiracy <laughs> theorists. <laughs> I like it, though. That's a great, that, that'd be a great story. Hear me it out. Yaddle be. and Epstein. All right. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold no. <laughs> Yaddle's on the logs. <laughs> Keanu Mooney was on the log? She visited the island. She, yeah, definitely. Out of all the people, Yaddle would definitely be the one. That little freaky fuck. I don't know. Well, anyway, <laughs> think about it. Let us, let us know what you think. Uh, what, what do the Jedi think happened to Yaddle? Yeah. That's good force for thought. I agree. That was way better than my force for thought. I'm going to have to beef mine good. up for next week. I'm glad, because Luke did call it beforehand, and I had mm-hmm. to call him off. I'm like, I really want to talk about it. Call this. him off. <laughs> lay, lay off the hit. Lay off the hit. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Sammy. 
What the f dude? <laughs> Cut us out! Oh, what? There was a miscommunication there. You didn't do the count out. No, I think he wants you to go up five, six, seven, eight, and then we all clap like a. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Next week. <laughs> Hold on. Bye, everybody. <laughs> well, you get to see Max's confused face the entire time. <laughs> In HD. <laughs> I'm over here trying to cue us out. All right. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Oh, but you, but you, you do that was a different take? <laughs> All right, see you, Sammy. I was already taking off my headphones. <laughs> we played music. I'm done. Flawless. I'm done. Flawless, gentlemen.